all of these things have a ton of features. Make sure you go through all of them. This is one of the best ways to learn. If you go through the virtual machines and you go through the network security groups, understand the permissions. So this is my journey on passing the Azure 104 exam. That is the Azure Administrator Associate. And we are just going to go over all the things that I did to actually pass. What's the exam? Who should actually take the exam? And all the strategies that I put into place to actually pass. And I hope that all of this information will help you in passing your exam if you decide to take it. I know that if I were to see this video before I took the exam, it would be incredibly helpful to kind of streamline my experience with studying, maybe take a three month study session and then cram it down into one because I actually know what to focus on. So that's really my goal here is to help you guys pass the exam a little bit more efficiently than maybe I or someone else would have approached it. Okay, so let's start with what is the Azure 104 exam? So this is the Azure Administrator Associate. So what we are going to be going over um, in this type of exam and all the things that you'll be actually studying is Azure infrastructure. And what this means is the virtual machines and load balancers and uh, the pretty much cloud networking, so to speak. There's things like this in AWS, which is Amazon's version of the cloud, and they have their own AWS certifications. This is Azure's equivalent. Even Google has certifications like this in the Google environment. So what this is, is a Microsoft's cloud environment and how to get started with all of the infrastructure building. And of course, along with that comes the question of who should actually go for this type of exam or when should you? Now, while this is technically labeled as a entry level certification, it is incredibly challenging and I don't consider it something that's actually entry level because it takes into account networking, which it kind of expects you to already know how to build out virtual machines so have a decent understanding on how computers in general work and it's also going to go over all of the cost and the business aspects of the implementation of azure infrastructure so what this means is you should really be going for this certification if one you just have an interest in going to a cloud type role for IT. So an Azure administrator or cloud architect and things like that would work really well to kind of start here with Microsoft if you plan on going into a Microsoft type role. And what that means is, uh, is more or less if you work for Microsoft, if you're a Microsoft partner or working as a consultant in cloud technology, or if you're in-house IT and you're implementing Azure or Microsoft technology, this is the certification that you would start with when you want to build out Azure infrastructure. So as a quick little recap of who should be going for this one, if you're an entry level and you are just looking into a cloud engineer or a cloud architect, that's where your end goal is. This is a great place to start. I would start with the AZ 900 because that's fundamentals, but you could pass that thing in a week. Um, this would be pretty much the, the proper entry level certification. And number two, if your shop or your whatever your current company is, is starting to expand into the cloud environment and specifically Microsoft Azure, this is when you would start to delve into this exam first, because it's going to teach you about all the networking, how to spin up VMs, how to load balance, um, a little bit about web apps, and then the cost structure associated to all of it. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a understanding of how this certification is going to be laid out for you. And it can kind of streamline your experience if you actually need this cert or if you don't need this cert. And you can just say yes or no to those questions. And if you do need the cert or you're just still interested in learning about it, that is what we are here to go over my experience with this exam and all the things that I did to pass. Okay, number one thing that I started with, and I do recommend you start with as well, um, with or without experience, is these Microsoft Learn modules. So if you were to just hop onto the web and go to, or just search here, I'll just search it all over again, Microsoft AZ 104, just type it in right into Google. Voila, very first option. And we can go ahead and scroll down. And you're going to see an entire course. Okay. This is very long. There's a lot of information. There's a lot of modules and, um, it's just a lot of information in general. So this is an awesome place to start because it'll teach you all of the basics that you need to know. 
a ton of different information. Just keep in mind when you're going through all of these different articles, there's going to be tons of different links to click and it'll just keep getting deeper and deeper. It's like a giant rabbit hole and it doesn't really end. Um, but if you do go through all of these modules, you're going to be in a really good spot. Um, although, don't try to take the exam afterwards. There's also a free practice exam. Where's that thing? Um, there's a free practice assessment. This is also quite good, but when it comes to comparing it to the real exam, it's nothing. It's, it's just kind of a, this is just information while the exam really tests your knowledge. If you only go through the modules in Azure and pass the practice exams with 90%, that does not mean you're going to pass the real exam. So you have to make sure that you do more than just these modules. Now, one little tip that I will give, because this is a ton of information, a lot of it is just reading articles, and then some of it has labs inside of these uh, modules. So as an example, let's go ahead and just click on the first one, and we're gonna start with, I don't know, this eight minute thing, right? So it gives you a lot of screenshots, but the majority of it, it really is just the walls of text. So I personally don't do well with walls of text. My eyes and my face will start to feel like they're melting and I absolutely hate it. So one little trick, you can do this on a phone as well, is I like to do like a text to speech thing, okay? In a browser, I'll show you that really quick. Um, this is Microsoft Edge in this more tools section, you can hit read aloud. And what this is, is just gonna read off this page. So if you're in a car or you're working out or you're doing whatever the heck you're doing, if you use these tools, this read aloud tool, you can get through these modules much quicker than you thought possible, as long as you're good at retaining information when it's verbally expressed to you. But of course, that's not everybody. Find what works for you, okay? That means if you're good at just reading stuff off of a page, do that. If you're good at taking notes, do that. If you're really good at um, taking in verbal information, then do that. That's my preference. And I would definitely suggest to just trying it all because you don't, you might not know what actually works best for you. So give it a shot. It's a pretty good idea. Okay, moving on to the second method. Now this is probably the best method for learning and that's actually doing your own labs. Now I have a video on how to create a free Azure virtual machine and that kind of goes through the whole setup guide. Um, Azure has a free trial. It gives you a certain amount of credits and dollars. You can either check out my video or I'll show you really quick. Maybe I get this right Azure free trial probably. Right, try Azure for free, there you go. So Google search that, create your account. You'll probably have to link your card, but it's not gonna charge you. Although if you're not careful, and now I'm really gonna drive home this point because there might've been a time that I was not careful and I got charged. So um, this will give you a ton of resources you can spin up for free. They're little tiny like virtual machines that can't actually do anything because they're so underpowered, but it will technically be free. So what you can do is start creating virtual machines, start creating storage accounts, load balancers, and things like that. By the time you get to a virtual machine, you'll be able to understand how to build out a subscription. Um, you'll understand management groups, um, and you will also understand resource groups. That is because when you start to build out a virtual machine, you kind of need a subscription and a resource group to even do anything. So you'll start there. And then the next step is making a network security group. Okay, and all of these things have a ton of features. Make sure you go through all of them. This is one of the best ways to learn. If you go through the virtual machines and you go through the network security groups, understand the permissions on how you can um, allocate users to the resource group or subscription level, okay? And then do your best with load balancers because there are plenty of questions on load balancers. Now the one part where you want to be careful because all of that is pretty cheap, it won't really uh, kind of send any cost your way. You'll get, I believe it's a $500 credit either way. So if you do end up running a bill, you have up to $500 before it starts charging you. So just keep an eye on it. I would probably suggest after you finish your little lab, just delete everything, okay? That way you don't get accidentally charged. The one thing that I wasn't careful with was spinning up a gateway, okay? Now, if you do a gateway correctly, it starts charging you a lot. They're very expensive um, 
maybe not to businesses, but to just a normal person sitting at, sitting at their computer. Um, if you spin up a gateway and you don't end up deleting it, it's going to charge you a lot. And yeah, so don't do that. But I do suggest spinning up the gateway, see how it works, delete it right after, okay? So on a rating, I would say the Microsoft Learn modules are like a five out of 10. Labbing is probably a 10 out of 10. It's probably gonna get you the most uh, bang for your buck. Don't actually spend money though. And then the next thing is probably either books or John Saville's, I don't know how to pronounce his last name, I apologize, his free YouTube series, okay? He has a YouTube cram video and it's all about Azure. Okay, so here is his YouTube channel, John Saville's Technical Training, and then you will want to go to the AZ-104 Administrator Associate Study Cram version two, because he does have a version one. Um, this is very new, I believe, uh, it's a year old. But either way, it's an awesome thing to cram. I would probably suggest it kind of at the end of your studying, right? So if you're taking a month or two months to study, do it at the end of the two months to cram in, maybe like the last week or two, and you'll really cram in a bunch of information. It's not directly related to the test questions. I wouldn't say related. It doesn't give you a good idea on what the test questions are like. Same thing with the Microsoft Learn modules. So there's still a gap of knowledge where you have all this information, but you don't know the structure of the exam. So after or besides the study cram in the modules, the only thing I would suggest is probably Tutorial Dojo. So let me go to Tutorial Dojo and show you what I mean. I have all these links saved. I can uh, pin them in the description if you wanna get to them a little quicker, blah, blah, blah. Now this is the only paid thing that you actually have to you know, think about getting. It's $14.99 and hear me out, it is going to be the, the, you know, the meat on your study sessions. It's going to give you a good breakdown of what the test might actually look like. I would avoid anything like an exam dump because it is against term of services, um, but the Tutorial Dojo website, they create their own exams. And I'm not trying to advertise or anything like that. It's up to you if you wanna get this stuff. Um, but this was my biggest helper and one of the biggest reasons that I was able to pass quite easily. And I highly, highly suggest it. It's really gonna tell you you, it's just gonna give you the practice that you need for the format of the exams. Because there's one thing that you might misjudge if you haven't done any certifications before, and that is sitting down at a computer and taking an exam for two hours straight, it feels like a midterm. And even though you might have all of this information and knowledge, you might not be used to this long-winded, big format, open-ended questions for two hours straight. It's kind of exhausting. So get used to actually taking things like that. And this is what that will do for you. Now that's really it for my exam. The only other tip I can give is get something called the Microsoft Replay if you would like to. Now what this is, is um, gives you two tries at your exam for like an additional fee, right? So if the exam is $165 and you fail it, you have to pay another $165. Now, Microsoft Replay is going to be like 200, mid 200, so it's a big discount and gives you an, like that cushion of a uh, retake of the exam. So let me see Microsoft Replay. Exam Replay, that's what it's called. So um, get this if you're feeling like you need an extra uh, retry at the exam. Now, I personally use the exam replay to just kind of like after a couple of weeks of studying, I jumped into the exam just to see the format of the exam. And that actually helped me a ton because I knew exactly what I was going to be running into. Even though I wasn't going to pass it the first time, I was lucky enough to get this expensed at my current company. So I didn't worry too much about having the extra expense, but it is a really, really useful tool. So highly suggest it if you have the extra dollar or you can of course just do the single exam purchase. Now that is it for my video guys. I really hope this helps you and good luck on passing the exam if you decide to take it. Please feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions at all and like and subscribe to help the channel. So I hope to see you in the next video. Thanks a lot.